Okay, so I'm starting this for the fourth time because my phone keeps ringing, which is so annoying. But anyway, it's about working uh, well with PRs if you're a uh, beauty blogger. And it's much more difficult now than it used to be to get a PR's attention because there are just so many more bloggers. Uh, but I think, particularly for younger bloggers, it's really worth remembering what, what a PR's job actually is. And that is to work as a go-between between, between the brand and the blogger, journalist, whatever, um, and secure as much coverage and as much positive coverage as possible. And they're the people who need to have the relationships with journalists and um, bloggers, but it's on behalf of the brand. So they're paid by the brand. So really, effectively, they're working on behalf of the brand. They're not working for us, they're working for the brand. Um, and sometimes this is very obvious, other times it's really not very obvious, but that, that's, just what, that's just what a PR does, amongst many other things. But um, in, in this particular instance, that's what a PR does. And so therefore, I think sometimes if people get a rejection or they are um, told they, they can't have any samples, they take it a little bit personally. But what you have to remember is that the skill of a good PR is to judge when there's a limited amount of samples, and very often these days there are limited amounts, there, there just literally isn't an overflowing magic well <laughs> that just delivers makeup whenever it's needed. It, that just doesn't exist. You know, they're sent a certain number of um, products and they have to make that go round uh, as best as they possibly can. Now, most PRs recognise that sometimes it's, it's quality over quantity, so don't worry too much if your blog is quite small, but you do need to um, let them know why it's relevant. Because writing a shopping list, as some bloggers do, I mean, I work with PRs quite closely on working with bloggers, and I've seen the email, so I know it happens, that you know some bloggers will write in and just go, hi, I've got a blog, now I'd like to try uh, this mascara, this eyeliner, this blusher, two of those lipsticks. It's like, it's, it's like sending out a birthday wish list. It's just, never going to happen and PLs don't like getting that sort of email. Your much better approach is to say, you know, I have a blog, it's still quite new, but I'm working really hard on it, I'm posting every day, you know, I'm active on Twitter and show the things that you're doing to grow your blog numbers. Because in fact, what a lot of PLs are looking for now is rather than the more established blogs, is new up and coming blogs and they're all always quite difficult to identify. So if you sort of say all that and you, and also identify that your audience, you know, if you're a young blogger, say, you know, my audience is, is quite young, probably around 15 to 25, and so this is why I think your brand would be perfect um, for me to review on my blog. You know, give some good reason, because why should anybody send you something for nothing with no good reason? And I think PRs really like that kind of personal approach as well, because God knows they get enough rude ones. Um, so, so just using basic manners and a little bit of thinking ahead about, you know, that you've really thought it through and you've made a conscious effort to think about why the brand is a good fit for your blog would go a very long way to making PRs look at you twice. I mean, they are very much inundated with emails that, you know, we can't get around that. And it could be sometimes they just can't get to you. But after that, it's worth sending um, a, a link to your review saying, look, this is what I thought of your product. I thought you'd like to see it. Um, it's had X number of comments or something like, no comments yet, but I'm hoping that, you know, I'll get some over time. So just something friendly, nice, natural. You can't email them every week. They can't cope with the emails they've got. So. Uh, the minute you've got a relationship or a response from a PR, that's not a green light to email them every other day or every week or just generally bombard them. But once a month is fine just to say, hi, just wondering if you think you have anything else that would be suitable for me to blog about or that my audience would really like, that sort of thing, rather than being demanding. Everyone's over demanding, they really are. And it doesn't really, I don't think it does anybody any favours to you come across as um, slightly entitled and it happens and I know it happens. So that's always a really a, a, a nice friendly approach but then once you get to do your post you know do be 
professional about it. You can have your own voice um, and still be professional. Um, and by professional, I mean, I think, articulate, uh, fair, um, friendly. And, you know, or, as long as you're fair, I don't think anybody really minds if it's not your favourite product. You, It's okay to say, you know, this is not a colour that suits me. Um, I wouldn't buy it. However, if I had green eyes and orange hair, I would buy it because it would be perfect. So there are ways and ways to, to say a thing. And I just think it's helpful for newer bloggers to understand that, um, you know, everybody wants to play nicely uh, but actually you you're the one that, that has to make it happen and you can make it happen um, by just having a really lovely um, approach I think anyway that's it but this is part one there are so many aspects to this that I unless I'm going to record like an hour-long video which would just be so boring for everyone um, but uh, there are some other things that I will um, cover as well, I think, because there, there's, there's plenty to say on it. Anyway, thanks.